Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present about another episode of Herald Tribune World Youth Forum from 1954. This episode discussion about do regional PACs promote peace? And participated following students. Presenter of the discussion is Mrs. Helen Height Waller. Chitranjan Kapoor from India. Azar Kanamuyapur from Iran. Vesna Gasparovic from Yugoslavia. Johan Holst from Norway. Do regional pacts promote peace? No, and I speak for millions of Asians when I say that. The Baghdad Pact has brought my country, Iran, peace, but it has got its own disadvantages. My answer is no, because military pacts prepare a new war in the world. My answer is absolutely yes, because it's only because of NATO that we still have peace in Europe today. This is the world we want. Each week, young people from the four corners of the earth come together to discuss the world we want. They are here as delegates to the 10th annual New York Herald Tribune Forum for High School. This discussion has been prepared with the assistance of Scholastic Magazines. It is directed by Helen Hyatt Waller. Welcome to our forum discussion. This discussion is among high school students from Norway, Yugoslavia, Iran, and India. Coming from four countries with such different political approaches, I suppose it's inevitable that these students' points of view on anything as controversial as regional pacts would be very divergent. Before we get into the discussion, though, let me introduce the students to you. First is Chitranjan Kapoor from India. Chitranjan is 16 years old and wants very much to enter an American university next year to come back here for his studies. From Iran is Azar Kanamuyapur. Azar has been telling me with interest about the intellectual discussions, stimulating discussions he's been having at Horace Mann High School. His third host school. From Yugoslavia, Vesna Gasparovic. Vesna means spring in Serbo-Croatian. Vesna has just celebrated her 19th birthday with a party that her host school gave her out in Sakasana, New Jersey. Vesna started to be an architect, but now she's going to change to literature and languages. From Norway, Johan Holz. Johan, 18 years old, goes to an 800-year-old secondary school in Norway, the most famous in the country. And I just found out they have a very special award once a year, one of the greatest honors a secondary student in Norway can have. The prince got it last year, and Johan got it this year. Now, on regional pacts. First of all, NATO, CEO, Baghdad Pact, the three we're considering tonight. Johan, suppose you uh, remind us what we should know about NATO. Well, you know, after the World War, the Western powers immediately tried to demobilize their forces. But they soon found out that the Soviets didn't demobilize their forces to the same extent. So they felt that the communists meant that certain threat to the European countries being the few free world. So they found out that they had to build up their defense in order to defend democracy. And accordingly, France, England, and the Benelux countries, they formed the Western Union. And the Americans, they liked it very much, and Truman, he wanted also the Americans to participate in such a treaty. And, and the uh, number of countries in it now? Well, they, they invited both the Scandinavian countries and Italy and uh, US and Canada and the United Kingdom. So, and uh, le later on, they have got Greece and Turkey and uh, Germany. So NATO today consists of 15 member states. Now, we don't have anybody from the CETO pact, but Chitran John, you're the only person from that area. Um, when was it formed and why and who belongs? Well, actually, the United States first three or feel feeler about three or four years back. But most of the countries in that part of the world did not like to join CETO. But after some time, the United States proceeded with its plans, and, uh, and the uh, pact was formally signed in September 1954. And uh, among the members of the pact are only three Asians, Pakistan, Thailand, and Philippines. And the rest of them are all outsiders who are not connected with that area. They're Australia, New Zealand, France, Britain, and America. Now, as I tell us what we ought to know about the Baghdad Pact. Well, the Baghdad Pact is a kind of pact against Russian forces, and it's a military pact. Uh, it was built up in 
the past year, about one and a half years, it's built up since one and a half years, and Turkey and Pakistan and Iraq were members, and England became a member too in 1955, and they asked the, uh, well, support of the United States, and the United States is the original supporter of the Baghdad Pact and gives military aid to the members. My country, Iran, uh, became a member after having a doubt whether it should be a member or not uh, in about five months ago. And they had a big conference in Baghdad. Another country which was uh, likely to become a member and didn't was Egypt, which opposed communism but didn't become a member of the pact. But why did your country join it? Well, my country joined it because we think that we should have a sort of military defense against Russia. After all, Russia is our northern neighbor. However, if we don't ask for a help from the United States, we, and we, stay, we should stay neutral, we, co we couldn't go on the side of the Russians, and so we should stay neutral. It's obvious that if there is some kind of war, and we are with America, we'll be destroyed by the Russians. Well, that's good. But if we stay neutral, we'll be destroyed by the both sides. You so, think that so why should we dest be destroyed twice instead of once? But you think that all <laughs> Asian countries and other countries who have stayed neutral, are they being destroyed by both the sides, like India? We had experience in this matter in the past war, and that's why we joined it. Well, that's mainly the reason for Norway joining the pact too, that she had this uh, experience the last world war. She was quite unprepared under Russia and the Germans that took Norway in a just a few days without any fighting. And today we won't let that happen once more. We want to fight for what we belong, but what we believe is right. And that's why we joined the NATO. We feel that we belong to the Western democracies and we want to defend democracy because we think that's the only legal form of government in the world today. That's no, we haven't heard from you. What's your opinion on Yugoslavia? It doesn't belong to any. Yes, we belong. We belong in Balkan Pact. But I can say that uh, it is a little different pretty different, <laughs> because our Balkan Pact, it isn't a um, pact against any, uh, uh, any uh, side, against uh, Russian, against communism, or against um, uh, Western democracy. It is pact in a case of attack of anybody, we can join in, mil in military, um, our three nations, Yugoslavia, Greece, and uh, Turkey. But it is pact founded on um, um, uh, founded on uh, econom, ec economy and uh, culture join. It is uh, one dif big difference than uh, pet such NATO and CETO. It is that it isn't um, really um, pet against anybody. The second difference, I think, is that uh, it is pet joined among a nation different uh, uh, systems. Our, our country uh, with socialist system and Greece and Turkey with uh, a different kind of system than ours. I was going, excuse me, I was going to ask you, Johan, and you, Azar, uh, was there any public controversy in your countries at the time you, Norway, joined NATO and at the time you, Iran, joined the uh, Baghdad Pact? Yes, it was. Um, of course, the, the communists, they opposed our joining NATO, but uh, as a matter of fact, the communists are not strong in Norway. In the National Assembly today, consisting of 150 representatives, the communists have three. So they are not very powerful. Of course, they have tried to oppose the, our joining NATO, but not successful. They got some support from the liberals and some from the socialist party, but they, they went through with a great majority. As far as today is concerned, I think that there's been a growing opposition against our joining NATO. Some people has just got blind from what they call the Geneva spirit. It's, as a matter of fact, it's nothing, according to my opinion. And uh, the many, many people to know it, I don't know why, but they, they say they believe in pacifism and they oppose every, every kind of treaty organizations against any nation. As a matter of fact, NATO is not against any nation, it's just a kind of defense organization. If it wasn't against any nation, say, if, if it wasn't against Russia, why wasn't Russia allowed to join NATO when it wanted to? Well, <laughs> when, when we, we took it just as a joke when Russia wanted to, be, be, to become a member of NATO. So, 
It isn't against anybody, is it? No, it is just a, a, a defense character. No, but I still think that maybe you took it as a joke and it wasn't a joke. Well, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> as are you? Well, I, before saying anything, I just wanted to ask Chitranjan if all his peop most of his people thought just like he does. I think when I speak about these matters, I speak for the majority of Indian opinion. So all people do like that? Well, I believe like in what? neutralism. Do believe in that, what you say? Well, actually, in uh, theory, we are not so neutral, but in practice, we have come to be neutral. Because we believe that that is the best way to ensure peace in the world, oh, and to do. work for peace. Well, wow. maybe for you, it may be a profitable policy. You know, you can gain things both from east <laughs> and both from west. I think that <laughs> instead of being profitable, you mean economically, do you? Yeah. Well, it's not because, you see, just hardly about one week back, the uh, American ambassador to Pakistan, he gave out a news report that the nations which had aligned themselves with America, they were getting 12 times more aid than those which had not. Do you have. think uh, India couldn't join the West? It could. And it could receive much more aid than we are getting now. But we don't want to sacrifice our independence. You believe that the, the future of the world rests in India, huh? Oh, no. Why, why will it rest on India? It rests on all the world. It does, but uh, India is going to play a leading part. Oh, no. It will just play a part which, according to its size and population, nothing more than that. As I was wanting to get into this. I would like to say something. Why somebody can play a leading part? Why we can all nations uh, together play a leading part? Isn't it's a mutual aren't understanding. Aren't America and Russia playing a very leading part today, which is uh, not in uh, accordance with their size as well as population? Well, actually, it isn't just in according to their size and population, it's according to their, their power, both economically and military. Well, then if they can do it, maybe India or China or other countries could also increase their power and be the same. Sure, Look, we've got, excuse me, we've got to give Azar a chance. I asked him a question several minutes ago. Was well, there I'll tell you about our country, uh, our people's opinion about it, but if all people think like, most of the people think like that, as you think, well, God save them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe you will. I, I think that, well, in my opinion, joining this pact is very good. It was profitable to us, of course, and many people in our country think so in many parts, but there is some disadvantage coming over this pact to the United States, not to us. And that is it, that uh, I must say that Russian propaganda as most of Americans don't believe in this, but because they live in America. But I live in Asia and I know Russian propaganda is not spending money, but it's so strong with, uh, that it can take under influence American propaganda and it can make people believe that America, by, by well, giving aid, military aid to the Middle East, wants war. Otherwise, you wouldn't give military aid. And after that, for instance, uh, I guess, however, I Russia is pretty Asia. tough for, uh, for, I'll tell you now, <laughs> Russia is pretty tough for the United States because the United States maybe is too young in politics as well as, well, I don't know, your, pre your president perhaps is too good to be a politician. Uh, however, I, what do you instance, exactly mean by that? Let me go on now. <laughs> yeah, let me go on. For instance, in, Russia asks from President Eisenhower here uh, for friendship, and President Eisenhower has no choice except saying no, rejecting You're referring it. to the friendship pact now, the oh, yeah. Bulgarian's letter asking well, us to join a friendship yeah. pact. I think yeah. it was very well turned well, down. It well, let us tell you. <laughs> when, <laughs> when President Eisenhower doesn't ex accept it, you don't have any influence over here, but the, the influence goes on our newspapers from uh, the Russian side, that pre we, ex we asked the Americans for friendship, they didn't accept it. It means they want war. Not necessarily. You see? <laughs> Maybe it is this influence on your country, but it is on Asian countries, on Middle Eastern countries. Well, I mean. we've got just one communist neighbor, we've got Russia and China both. <laughs> well, what what you would you that? say, uh, John was the effect in India of this recent exchange of letters? Well, actually, I wasn't in India then, and I can't tell you much about it, but Personally, I just feel that it was very well turned down. Mm. Let's go on to another question now, because I did want to ask you uh, whether membership for you in NATO and for you in the Baghdad Pact has really increased understanding among the member nations, between your country and the member nations. 
Oh, I do think that it has increased understanding. As a matter of fact, whenever nations are collaborating and working together, it increases understanding. And the uh, NATO powers, they are, they are really being working together, both in NATO and on the other many, many organizations, they have collaboration in Europe, such as the Europe Council and the uh, Economic uh, Organization and so forth. So it has really increased understanding in Europe. Well, I, I could say something now, that uh, in our history, we had some conflicts with Turkish government, the Ottoman government, and this Baghdad Pact and our membership in that has removed this conflict completely, and with Pakistan and Iraq. But, and with the United States, of course, we hadn't any conflict before because we didn't know them before. <laughs> and, <laughs> but as for England, I must say, not only it hasn't taken away this conflict, it is England's being a member of this Baghdad Pact makes most people suspicious towards it. Isn't, don't you think that America is being a bit clever in not joining the pact? America is never clever. Oh, <laughs> oh she isn't? No. <laughs> Wherever England's food is in there, America can't be clever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me like... ask you what your country's membership in uh, Iran and Baghdad Pact and Norway in NATO uh, accomplishes that your country's membership in the UN does not accomplish anything? Well, first of all, I can say that it gives the people a kind of concrete security. They feel that they have some power to defend their ideology, their democracy. And I think that it, it's, it's much better. They, they feel much more secure with that than while just the talking and negotiation in the in United Nations. Of course, that's important too, but they want to feel that they are secure. And they feel that they are secure with NATO. All right. I think we feel secure too, but as I, I guess I told before that one other disadvantage it brought us upon us is that by joining it, we are making the Reds redder. But That's the thing. You think you're making the Reds redder? Yeah. Why? Just because they are threatened, beginning to threaten us right now. They are, they're beginning yeah. to threaten us. I mean, they're you. feeling threatened by the pact, and so, they're, yeah. uh, so far uh, they're getting more threatening. Yeah, but you. as a matter of fact, I believe, I'm very sorry. As a matter of fact, I believe that uh, by our joining the Baghdad Pact, Russia is... Well, I have some crazy idea coming up, and I, I'm going to say it. <laughs> that is it, that Russia is afraid of the United States, and the United States fears Russia. That's After true. All, let me idea. say, okay, and uh, that wasn't my idea. Uh, if Russia knows that it's more strong than the United States, it wouldn't attack the United States. But maybe if you, the United States knew this, it would attack. Because I believe this, I don't know, just track my mind right now, <laughs> that if the United, uh, if for instance Russia attacked the other countries, the soldiers, the Russian soldiers, which are of the simplest part of the country, would see how people do live in other parts of the country, uh, other countries. And when they see it, there is any chance of revolution against their government. Actually, do. And so I'm afraid the communist government is shaking right now. Actually, I don't think that there's any chance to see how the people lived when coming to a war. You don't get any, with a warfare today with atomic weapons and so forth, you won't get any opportunity of seeing the way of life. And even if you did get an opportunity of seeing it was too late. But you, John, John, you've been trying to get in here. <laughs> well, actually, now the conversation has shifted beyond. No, we'll come back I, to the point it? on membership in UN and membership in PAC. Well, personally I feel, and quite a lot of people in Asia feel it, that uh, the regional pacts in the United Nations are a contradiction of each other. They don't supplement each other or complement each other, but they contradict each other. But I, in the United Nations Charter, it's mentioned that all the uh, nations would work actively for peace and not for war. But I think that these pacts work against the interests of peace and they increase the tension of the world and increase, actually, make the Cold War, say, colder than uh, it is. Actually, uh, in the United Nations Charter, it said that they are full opportunity of uh, establishing regional pacts if they are to pro promote the peace, to promote the, the understanding but between we, people I and defend human rights, peace. and that's exactly why we have established NATO. But they don't promote peace, they increase the fear and suspicion in that's lurking in the atmosphere. Well, that's from today. your point of view, but from our point of view, it's defending human rights. Well, of course, naturally, we are two different beings and we'll have two different viewpoints. <laughs> <laughs>
but our human rights are equal Okay, take the same. it easy. I'm going to ask a question <laughs> right now. I was just going to ask Vesna if the, his, her country wants to enter the, enter the NATO, I mean, if your, if, does your country want to enter the NATO or is it the NATO that doesn't accept your country? No, we want to enter in the NATO because we think it is, uh, this regional military pact are, uh, are a, pre a prepared world for the war. I think bec uh, because um, make a stronger military power on the any side, well, or the, on the communist side, or on the other side, well, it's, it's uh, a mere deep, uh, ditch, uh, deeper, deeper ditch, uh, deeper than it already is. But Vesna, you see... And prepare condition for the new war. A cultural pact is based on the United Nations, somewhat. Well, do you think the United Nations is really powerful? Well, getting back well, on... United Nations? Of course, there is the fact that if people don't believe in the United Nations, the United Nations can't be powerful. But do you think the United Nations are, is really powerful today? It didn't... Think, it couldn't do anything in the Arab League and the conflict between it and I Israel. I think uh, the getting, United Nations are really powerful. Are they? Can, they are only supported can, by the United we, States. But no, we, and the United Nations cannot work without with just the United without, States. Yes. However, that's I don't a know. contradiction. It can't I don't know what's just your can't. idea of uh, the powerfulness of the United Nations or something like that. The, uh, I could give you a hint of what I think for the United it. Nations. And that's why I brought up this question, because I just wanted to express my own opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, however, in the, un the United Nations will be powerless. Uh, it's, I mean, till the time that the four big shots of the w world, well, we say the United States and the USSR and England and France, which is France, France I don't know sure. why. <laughs> he he sticks his nose in everything I, I can't <laughs> understand. However, if they have, till the time they have veto power, the United States is nothing at all. Well, however, what do you think? United Nations, you mean? Yeah. The United Nations, yeah. Uh, actually, you must see I that. think that uh, we, we have to increase the power of the United Nations. How could but you? That I think it, have, it, it can be done that uh, every, every nation in the world have the same role in the United Nations. Would the communists accept it? Uh, no. <laughs> well, everybody, we have come here to discuss the uh, regional pacts, and I don't think well, we I completely nation. agree with you. And, uh, well, getting uh, back to the same idea, the utility of uh, the pacts, I can say that uh, there's another thing which uh, has been caused by the regional pacts, directly or indirectly. See, uh, if we investigate the causes of the division of Germany, we will find out that uh, Germany was warned by Russia not to enter NATO if it wanted to be unified with East Germany. Well, but Germany entered NATO and didn't heed the advice or the warning of the Russians. And, uh, uh, and uh, the Russians, after that, the Russians didn't want, uh, made, made the Warsaw Pact and took East Germany into that. So the uh, Cold War between West Germany and East Germany was perpetuated. And, uh, now I think the chances of unification of Germany are lesser than they were before. Actually, I completely disagree with you, but as a matter of fact, we got, I see we got the German representative, uh, Christoph Bertram, and uh, I think that I'll cede my place to him and he can defend his point of view better than I can, because okay. he knows the things much better. You want to get into this, Christoph? <laughs> well, I'll be waiting. This is Christoph Bertram from Germany. Take Norway down, well, put up I'll Germany, will you? Uh, Stop you better that, be careful. Yeah. Uh, that well, thing I'm is finished and we don't want to be reminded of it again. Now listen, uh, there are two things that I, I agree and I disagree with you, but I disagree with you especially because you said wherever, really cool, yeah, man. you always said something bad, some bad things about poor old United States and uh, if ever England isn't something, the United States doesn't know anything whatsoever. <laughs> I think it's a little bit primitive a way of, of painting good old Uncle Sam. He's a little bit more clever than that. Oh, yes. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> Uh, he might be too honest, but he's nice. Yes. Uh, now let me say something about Germany. Yeah, he's you having you candy let me, uh, <laughs> jump in there. Uh, you see, uh, the situation in Germany, I don't think, when I left Germany, it was over a month ago, and uh, I don't think people really expect something from Nero, expect those people who always expect a miracle. See, Germany, 
What is opinion, Nehru going to be in West Germany? One of these weeks. I can't say the exact no, date. He is <laughs> going there this summer in May or June. And what's he going there for, Chitranta? Well, the West German government invited him, and, uh, and the, uh, the West German foreign minister went to India also. And he had talks with the Indian Prime Minister, Mr. Nehru. And evidently they want uh, a bit of his help in unifying the country. It sometimes seems to me that Indian people um, try to carry coal to Newcastle and saying that uh, um, trying to get their policy and their idea of neutrality to every part of the world and they think it's going to work out there um, under whatever conditions. But I would say that um, a, a German neutrality would be uh, some sort of uh, cat-mouse mo neutrality. Russia the cat and Germany the mouse. You are thinking then that NATO kept Germany from being unified as Chuchanjan alleges. I kept, uh, I think uh, NATO kept Germany from being, had the other part of Germany, from being overrun. And that, uh, I agree with you that pacts are a hor horrible invention, but they're a life-saving invention. Uh, I'd, I'd rather say that uh, um, if I die, my life has been, um, oh, okay. have, has been protected up to now by uh, uh, pacts and I die a natural course, uh, then I die by an atom bomb coming from the skies and say, well, I was neutral. You raised the question of uh, that the Indian neutralist policy could not be adopted in Germany. Did I understand you correct when I think so? I think that Indian, Indian neutrality is something very good in India, but it's a very different matter all over the world. Could you tell me the points of difference? Hmm? Could you tell me the points of difference? Why it is different for, say, Germany and uh, and it, and uh, it is not so for Yugoslavia, Egypt, India, Burma, Indonesia, Cambodia, and all these nations. If India would be divided by an iron curtain, and Russia would be in one part Who's of this country. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? The allied, the allied uh, uh, powers made this agreement in Potsdam. But nevertheless, Russia is standing in Germany. The situation is much different. But I... It, it's kind of hard to trust somebody who has treated your country so badly. You will uh, you agree to that. But you see, if you take the case of Japan, America treated Japan very badly, but I think now Japan is one of the best friends of America. Is it? Oh, yes? You, um, the Americans maybe think so, but pay, perhaps they aren't. What? They're not the... What belief have you got that Jap Japan is a good friend of America? Well, you see, I'm attending the Columbia High School with the Japanese delegate, and every day, she, in answers to questions, she... But the yes. Japanese delegate is going to Columbia High School. You don't expect him to... Uh, to uh, express his uh, opinions here. Well, anyway, do it doesn't matter. Yeah. She's here to say something what she about, thinks and what her people think. country and its if relations with other countries. But now look here, uh, Japan wasn't divided. Japan hasn't got the camp contrast between a democracy and a totalitarian country. To come back to just one point you made, Toffa, you said that in the atomic age, uh, you referred to PACs, and I yeah. wanted to ask you, do you think that PACs in the atomic age have the same effectiveness that they had uh, in previous times? I think they have. I think they have as, you see, it's a, kind of man has to take over responsibility if he wants to push the button and get the atom bomb down. And he will uh, get away from that responsibility and he'll do anything not to take it over, not to commit suicide. He'll, uh, I think he'll, the pacts will have a very, a still important and uh, not less important factor in defense. I'm not a general, as you see here, and, uh, <laughs> But as a matter of fact, I think I can try it a little bit. Well, I don't know whether you've convinced Vesna or Chitanjan or not. I'm sorry, our time's up. Has anybody got one final thing they want to say? I would uh, like to say. Okay. All right, Vesna. I? Okay. I would like to ask you, we are sensible beings. And why we cannot act sensibly? We mistake when we are thinking then we are unmistakable and all falls through on the other side. I think we ca have to change attitudes between nations and uh, between among nations, a uh, conflict among nations, not desire uh, with uh, military power. Thank you, Vesna. It's a good note to end on. And thank all of you. We have to say good night now until next week. But I say thank you because you've certainly helped us understand a bit more personally why your country feels the way it does on the matter of regional PAC.